Now it's a honor to introduce to you to the presenters in this webinar. The first presenter of the webinar is Professor Desmond Wesley Govender. Desmond Wesley Govender holds a PhD in Information Systems from the University of KwaZulu Natal and a Master's in Information Technology from the University of Natal. He has knowledge, skills, and experience in the development, revision, and review of learning materials and assessment of frameworks and tools that support improved learning. He has been conferred the UKZN Meritorious Award in 2006-2009. He is presently an NRF re rated researcher in South Africa whose research is based in computer science education. He has widely published and is one of the external quality assurers for Umalusi Quality Assurance Body for the subject information technology in South Africa. Presently, Desmond is a professor at the University of KwaZulu Natal and is also the discipline leader for computer science education in the School of Education. I will now invite Professor Desmond Wesley Govender, our first presenter, to deliver his presentation in 10 minutes. Over to you, Professor Govender. Uh, thank you, Aiza. Okay, good uh, morning to you if you're in my part of the world. Uh, and before, and good afternoon to you if you are in probably Mauritius, India, and that part of the world. Um, uh, thank you for that introduction, uh, Waiza. Uh, as you can see, the title of my short presentation is Crisis Management for Remote Teaching and Learning. Uh, you can also, if you want to call it uh, really crisis planning. Uh, at the outset, I just want to say that uh, my presentation is a very a, a practical one and uh, so not very theoretical or philosophical uh, so it's really you know uh, practical things that we did in this uh, uh, during this period of uh, crisis uh, so I'm going to try and move as quick as possible okay so why crisis management I think uh, uh, much has been said already about uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic situation. And for us, we find that it necessitated changes in our day-to-day -day living, as well as our practices in our workspaces. I mean, I never thought that uh, you know, the day would come when I would be buying my daily bread and milk online, uh, but uh, that's what has happened. So we had to also look at our practices at work. Now at UKZN, uh, basically I'm going to home in on what we try to achieve in the School of Education, right? But the university-wide also had a, a bigger plan in place and we uh, sort of fell in line with that plan. But at the same time, we had our own, uh, uh, you know, training for staff in our School of Education. Now, obviously we had to look at uh, alternate means of tuition and why I say alternate is simply because we are a face-to-face -face university. Uh, and uh, we've always uh, tried uh, to promote blended learning. And this goes as far back as maybe more than 10 years. Uh, but there was always, you know, the, what we call a staggered buy-in. So there was always resistance. Uh, and so it wasn't easy to get staff and students uh, fully on board. So our obligation here was to provide full support to students to continue to learn and to complete the academic year. So that was something that we had to take cognizance of and then to staff to deliver quality education uh, to our students. Right, so how, what uh, the, the current situation, right, called for a review of our current modes of delivery and assessment strategies and for innovative and creative approaches uh, to be adopted. The, in fact, all academic content for our modules uh, had to be moved to our virtual platform. And our uh, official virtual platform is Moodle. And why I say all academic content, uh, prior to this, uh, if you were using a learning management system at UKZN, 
it was mostly supplementary content and uh, content that was, you know, would support uh, Alexa that was uploaded to Moodle. It wasn't uh, the actual content. And when we say the actual content, I'm referring more to even uh, the lecture content, right? And I'll show you, talk to you about how we did that. Obviously, there were uh, many staff challenges and student challenges. And just to very quickly uh, outline some of the student challenges, uh, many of our students are funded by our government funding agency called NESFAS. And um, many of them had not received their laptops. Normally, first year students get laptops uh, in their first year. And uh, they, this was, didn't happen. So then there was the logistic uh, challenge in getting laptops to these students. Uh, then there was the issue of data costs, right? Because students now were relying heavily on an online mode. And then there was the lack of quality of network coverage uh, for first year students. And obviously also first year students, we needed to orientate them to our learning management system. Then in terms of staff challenges, right? There was the capacity issue in terms of uh, uh, enabling staff, those who resisted in the past in terms of uh, an online mode or a blended mode, uh, we need to capacitate staff. And uh, I'll talk about how we did that. Then there was also the issue of um, uh, work experience, especially teaching practice, uh, which we are yet to, uh, well, we have a plan in place, but it will only unfold in the second semester. Now we, what we had to, in the shortest possible time, had to decide what will work best and therefore, you see I've put up on my slide that in terms of pedagogy, we had to compromise. And when I say we had to compromise, what we actually did was, uh, we, we, uh, with the courtesy of a colleague of ours, Dr. Craig Blue, we put, uh, he put together a very uh, crash course on digital pedagogy, which we called the virtual acti uh, activated experience, which was made available to every staff at UKZF and which they had to go over in their own time. And just so that to bring them up on pedagogy when teaching online. Uh, then the, the practically what we had to do was every course outline for every module had to be reviewed, right? And this we did from a discipline perspective. Disciplines had to identify the skills, the outcomes and content that need to be covered and how these activities will be adjusted, right? So they, uh, disciplines got together, they had to identify materials that they already had access to or can create to teach uh, remotely. And then basically we relied heavily on uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, presentations that lectures already had in place because most lectures in their lectures were making use of a PowerPoint presentation. But now what we had to do was is to scale them in order for them to make either audio or video recordings of these PowerPoints. And then also we, you know, the, we use Zoom recording and uh, together with all the necessary reading material, but keeping in mind that all of this now had to be uploaded on Moodle and not just uh, supplementary material. Okay, so then they had to, we had to look at a new plan of assessment. Now, the reason we had to do that was basically every module uh, you know, consisted of formative and summative. So in most cases, a module would have a, a continuous assessment part, which was about like 40%, and the other 60% would have been made up of an, a formal summative examination. But now we have to look at alternate assessment strategies, which included things like you know, online quizzes, a time test, assignment portfolios, etc. And it were, eventually it was a Senate decision that every module will become a continuous assessment. So there was no, so for the first semester, there was no module now that will have a examination component. Right, so in dealing with this, we had to address issues of uh, student consultation and engagement because remember previously students were, could knock on a lecturer's door during his consultation time. So we had to advise academics as to uh, how to go about now handling a consultation. And this basically was done all online and we had to advise in that regard. Then we had to uh, talk about coordination of teaching across modules, 
especially the large modules. And yeah, you know, again, we have to capacitate staff to say, okay, we were fortunate now that the university made Zoom professional licensing available to all academic staff. And the staff had to then use this facility to coordinate uh, large modules. Then supporting students who needed the support, including students who didn't have access to an online facility. So yeah, again, what UKZN did was they came to the party as to say and got in contact with all the cell phone companies. They managed to strike a deal for data provision. So every student who needed uh, data or connectivity was given uh, data and the packages range from about 20 gigs per month for a student. Uh, which was um, uh, renewed monthly. Uh, and so if a student needed data, he was given a, a router together with the data. And this was by uh, one of the four uh, cell companies in our country. Right, then the most important obviously was the last aspect of uh, uh, the, the trying to capacitate our staff and, and encourage a community of practice because we felt this is what uh, would work, uh, you know, needed to be done. And this is where the emphasis was. So in, with this regard, what we did is now in the School of Education, we have clusters that are made up of discipline. So in each cluster, a so-called ICT champion was identified. And the champion had to work with this cluster basically just to identify uh, needs, ICT needs. And then the School of Education identified so-called experts, but I don't like to call them experts. I just like to call them more experienced staff in ICT and myself being one of them. And there were a few of us, I think in total about five or six academic staff who the so-called experts and uh, or more experienced staff. And the, uh, what happened here was the, they would liaise with the, cha the ICT champions from each of the clusters to identify training needs uh, and then uh, address those. Now, basically, we, uh, we did have a training program in place, and that simply consisted of we started off, we we're fortunate to have uh, Dr. Pama, who was a fellow from the US, uh, and, we st uh, and was very au fait with Zoom. Uh, and so she started off by, uh, I think, you know, almost 90% of the staff attended a session on how to use Zoom and things. Then we started off, thereafter we followed that with uh, sessions on simple things like how to do a PowerPoint recording, whether it was audio or video, and then how to upload that onto Moodle, uh, then how to compress files. Uh, so these were all things that we knew staff needed. And as we uh, planned these, staff would attend via Zoom. All of this was done uh, online and we would capacitate staff. Then uh, we moved on to uh, mm -hmm. Google Forms and basically that was for assessment purposes, right? We needed to address the different forms of assessment and we had to have training there. Now we found that this type of training worked because mm -hmm. uh, eventually what it had happened, many one-on-one, -on -one, a, a community of practice was developed and many one-on-one -on -one training began to happen where uh, staff would contact uh, individual uh, ICT champions or so-called mm -hmm. experienced staff and say, you know what, I'm having difficulty with this Desmond? one aspect. And Desmond? then we would uh, walk them through it. There's one apology. And, uh, yeah. okay. and so we found that that worked out quite well. Right. Then we also at the end did do some uh, surveys just to uh, give you an idea like that uh, like we asked Desmond? students, you know, do you have internet connectivity? And we did get uh, quite a good response here. That's the last slide here now. And then we asked things like, you know, uh, we asked students about uh, whether they were able to access Moodle and do it uh, successfully. Right? So practically that's, you know, what we did in a crisis situation. Okay. Thank you, Desmond, for the uh, good presentation, nice presentation and crisis management. Look, look clearly, map out how you plan for the assessment, how you had the action plan for capacity of staff within your institution. We will take the question after all the presentation as mentioned before.